Hello guys for Violent Python. So in this tutorial we'll be going through the Python basics and we'll be getting started with writing a small script to scan and banner grab a specific port. So we'll be taking a look at towards the FTP scanning. So before we proceed with that, let me tell you a small story as to how I got exactly into Python. So uh, there was a time when I was not that good into writing script. I used to write tools, tools, and I used to go down and only use a lot of tools in pen testing. So once I actually went with one of my friend for on a pen testing. So it was like he was my colleague. He was a senior, obviously, and I went with him. So over there, I saw him that uh, it was in security audit and we were asked to go and find any vulnerable machines that we had. So we started, I started with the scanning of Nmap and Nessus, but I did not get any specific vulnerability on any machine. The reason being that I was not even able to get a specific range of IP addresses. So uh, then I came to know that the people have actually banned specific scanning on these specific tools that's Nmap and Nessus and similar tools. But on the other hand, my friend was actually getting a lot of information. So I just asked him that how was it possible to go ahead and uh, let's say gain ac access to basically everything. He informed me that the signature of every tool that you have is different. The signature of the tool that he wrote was quite different and the company did not know. So that's why they were not able to block his tools from scanning anything. That was the first thing I realized why Python was so important for me to learn. The second thing was that once my friend actually completed his scan, he just opened a few scripts. He has like more than 500 scripts with him that he keeps in his single pen drive. So he straight away go ahead and shot up the script opened up his rootkit and yes, he already had access to one of the machines in the system. So he exploited a machine using a backdoor. So it was actually a vulnerability in FTP that he used. So he gained access to that machine and through that machine, he started uh, scanning every other machine in the network and he started gain accessing to them. Later on, he submitted a report stating that we had actually successfully penetrated and we actually showed them where, where the fault actually lied. But the thing over here is that Python is something that you can actually do on a long basis. You can do anything that you want. The imagination is only the limit to get started with Python. So let's go ahead and set up our development environment first. So you can go ahead and download the uh, web uh, specific tool from the Python as I showed you. If you are using Linux, you probably have it by default. So the Python standard library and printed modules, they have actually an extensive range of tools such as built-in data types or exceptional handling and uh, numeric and math modules or let's say they can even handle the operating system files. They have cryptographic services and much more. They can even go ahead and operate with the operating system or th that's basically the interoperability. That's something that you won't find in every other programming languages. It can also go ahead and create your mails, send it everything via terminal, download mails from your Gmail account and probably everything such as interaction with IP protocols or let's say creating your own packets and many useful modules. So we will go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, you can go ahead and gain access to these things by going to the Pi websites. That's PYPI. You can find an extensive amount of modules over there. So you can just go to PyPy dot python dot org slash p y p i so this is the website where you'll find a lots and lots of python modules you can just go and take a look at that and type sudo app get install these specific modules and you can see what this things does over here on the right hand side so there are a lot of Python modules. If you keep on searching, you'll find them over here. As you can see, it has more than 82,695 packages. That's like it. You won't be able to obviously go through every other thing, but you can actually find it depending upon your requirement, what you need to do. So we will utilize a lot of these tools. First, we will be going ahead and installing the Python and map package to handle parsing of the and map results. So I'll show you how we could do that. So once we have saved the package to a local file, we can uncompress the contents and change it into an uncompressed directory. So from that working directory, we can issue the command such as python setup.py, which will install the nmap package. So we can do that or we can actually go ahead and use easy install. Let's say if we have easy install available already. So uh, we don't have, so I'll just go and type apt hyphen get install python hyphen setup tools 
uh, so once you go and install this you'll probably get or you can go to get any packages that you want just from the easy install package you can install those things so i'll be installing the nmap module using the easy install package So this will actually try to find the latest package over here and download them automatically. So I'll just type easy underscore install and python underscore nmap. Sorry, python hyphen nmap. Okay, so I'll need to use sudo for that. Okay, as you can see, it's searching for the python and map directory uh, online and as you can see it has installed and uh, installed all the dependencies of the python and map module as well we would need a few more things uh, with easy install so let's go ahead and get started with that as well i'll type sudo space easy underscore install pipe pdf we'll be using this to go ahead and craft our pdf exploits as well Python hyphen nmap in case you have not installed that already. By geo IP for IP locator. Mechanize. That's another uh, module and beautiful soup food for obfuscating everything. I'll just go ahead and hit enter. It will go ahead and check for every all of these tools online which can convert uh, Python modules or Python scripts into a PDF file and then go ahead and execute all of these things. So let this get installed. So uh, I'll be explaining how we can go ahead and install the Bluetooth libraries also so that we can actually do a bit of Bluetooth hacking using Python scripts or at least sniffing as well. And once we are done that, I'll be showing you a lot of things. So the next thing to keep in mind is to install sudo apt get install python hyphen blues bluetooth python hyphen obex ftp it will install all the important parts that are available over here i'll tap shift y and enter so it will search for those tools and install that uh, depending upon our requirement and then finally check which version of python do you have uh, this version is more than enough 2.47.6 in case you need uh, a different version you can download it by typing apt get install or we have python 3 already installed that's 3.4 you can upgrade that in case you want it i'll be using 2.7 version for my whole course so let's get started with the first basic script that i have over here so the first and the most simple script is we'll go ahead and write the obviously the most easy script that we have that's hello world so if you have an experience in c or something similar to that then you might be knowing that you need to write like int main and all those things like four to five lines of code that's not the same so we'll just type python echo print a slash means next line hello world slash double quotes and i'll type std out hello dot pi so if i if you can see we already have a file over here so if i type cat hello dot pi it's already there so i'll just go ahead and type let's say python and i'll just type hello dot pi it will go ahead and print out hello world so this is as easy as executing the python scripts but in similar manner python scripts also are extremely interactive so a, a simple a normal programmer can even invoke the whole python interpreter and interact with the interpreter directly instead of writing all the commands down so to start with the interpreter just type python and hit enter and you will see this prompt that means it's been executed properly then you can type print double quotes hello world and it will print out the same back to you so to initially understand some of this uh, things you need to have a bit of understanding of this language so this first chapter will actually take you through the whole thing and you can actually spot the interactive interpreter by looking at just this arrow prompt it means that i am already inside the interpreter 
So uh, as I'll go through all the Python examples in this tutorial, we will also build our scripts out of several functional blocks of code, something known as methods and functions. We will write our each script. I'll show you how to go and assemble or reassemble these methods and invoke them from the main command. That's, that's basically the method. So you can try to run all of these scripts that just contains isolated functions. We'll be running these scripts on our Metasploitable 2 that we have over here. And we'll be using a lot of main function that we have defined. So before we start writing our first program, I'll just go ahead and show you some of the important things of the Python library. The first thing is variables. So in Python, a variable points to a data that is stored in a memory or location. This memory location can store different types of values such as integers or real numbers, booleans, floats, strings or any such complex data, even such things as like list or dictionaries. So I'll show you a simple code and I'll show you how we can go and store a string. So we will combine two variables together into a string and we'll explicitly go ahead and cast the port as a string using the string function. So I'll just type port equals to 21 and I'll type banner equals to let's say FTP. I'll just put it into quotes and remember that you always need to put a string into quotes for it to understand and I'll type let's say print. I'll type let's say for example checking vulnerability and I'll type for colon space double quotes close plus I'll type banner that is the variable that I have used plus and again I'm going to type, type on port and I'll type plus the port that means it will go ahead and show you checking vulnerability for just one second okay checking vulnerability for uh, on this specific banner on port and it'll show me the which port it's running on so okay so I think I missed out a few things over here okay sorry since port is a string I'll need to put that into the uh, into the circular braces that basically parentheses and now as you can see it printed out checking vulnerability for FTP that's the banner which has printed out on port that's the string that we have port that's basically 21. So you cannot combine uh, you cannot concatenate strings and integers so I had to go ahead and convert that into a string that basically 21 to go ahead and execute this simple script. So that is how easy this whole thing can be. Now Python reserves different memory spaces for variables when the programmer declares, declares them. So the programmer does not have to be explicitly declared the type of variable and the Python interpreter decides the type of variable and how much space in the memory to reserve. I'll show you another example over here. So let's say for example I'll type type parentheses banner. It will go ahead and tell me what the banner is exactly. It's a string. If I type type parentheses port, it will tell me what the port is. It's basically an integer. So if I type something like let's say port list equals to bracket 21 comma let's say 22 80 and 1110. That's basically 110 and I'll hit enter. If I type type parentheses port list, it will tell me that it's a list. Similarly arrays and all those things can also be open. Let's for example if I type port open equals to true. And I'll type type I'll type let's say port open it should give me something as a boolean value since uh, true means uh, true is a boolean value perfect yeah true and false are boolean values similar to variables we do have something called as strings so strings can be converted to uppercase lowercase and similar things for example we already have something called as FTP banner if I type let's say print banner it will type me FTP if I type print banner dot lower parenthesis it will go ahead and convert that into a lowercase so if uh, I can type let's say for example abc equals to let's say ftp ftp and string so now I'll type if abc equals to uh, let's say okay I'll come to the uh, if else later on let's go ahead and just convert this into the whole thing into the simple things first so I can also go ahead and replace the whole thing let's say I'll type print banner dot replace and I'll type let's say re I'll specify which things replace FTP and I'll replace it by let's say ABC sorry I'll just type in like let's say FTP to um, let's say SMTP and so as you can see FTP has been replaced with SMTP and it's instead of printing the banner but it's only temporary so I can also type print 
banner dot find let's say f will show me what is the number of f that's basically minus that's because it's a lowercase if I type capital it will be different because f is a zero if I type t it would be one so it's basically showing me in ftp what is the uh, where does the whole thing lie 